Hey guys, so welcome to today's vlog. So today is my first full day off in a while, as in I don't even have to do schoolwork. I do have a tiny little bit of schoolwork that I have to do. I have to reread through one of my final papers that I'm working on and just check to make sure it makes sense and doesn't sound awful. But other than that, which that should only take me maybe 20 minutes at most, um, just get, once I get that done, all the schoolwork I have. So this is kind of my first day of not only no work, but also no school. I can just enjoy my day, which I'm very excited about because my father actually just this last week ended up giving me a Barnes & Noble gift card because it was his birthday recently and he received that. However, he is in the middle of a million and one books. He barely has any time to read usually, so he ended up just giving it to me because he was like, I do not need to add any more books to my ever-growing need to read pile. So I decided may as well just enjoy my day off by going to the bookstore. And on top of that, I'm actually going to try to go to two other bookstores. I have two independent bookstores near me that I love to go to. And one of them I haven't been to in a very long time. And they're actually having a sale today because apparently it's independent bookstore day. So they're doing a little sale. And again, I haven't been there in a long time so I figured you know what let's just go there and then I was like you know what and while I'm at it I may as well go to the other independent bookstore near me and see mostly because they have a few options for ancients -a -thon, which by this point you should have seen the announcement for if not I will link it down below if you're curious about it but basically I'm hosting a readathon with Jennifer Brooks in June where we'll be reading everything from the beginning of literature so essentially Gilgamesh excuse my little rough voice but anyway everything up from Gilgamesh all the way up to the 1600s so 1699 which is a huge swath of time but I feel like there's a lot of different types of books to read in there and and I feel like it's kind of, while it is a huge swath of time, it also isn't necessarily a super well-read time period, especially on booktube. So we felt like it would be a good time to host a readathon for it. And anyway, I actually just met with Jennifer this morning to solidify some details about it. I'm hoping that this second bookstore that I wasn't originally planning to go to, but I figured may as well, may as well make a huge day of going to bookstores today. But they tend to have a little bit more options for that time period in this particular bookstore than the other independent bookstore and I don't know I'm probably not going to use my Barnes & Noble gift card on that I in fact have a very specific book I want to use my Barnes & Noble gift card on because it's a book that it's hard to find for pretty cheap but I've wanted it for years and I just figure I may as well get it while I have free money essentially so anyway I'm going to take you along with me and then tonight I'm planning on just having a good cozy reading night I'm going to order in food I'll be reading primarily The Half Sisters by Geraldine Jewsbury, which I'm in love with. So I'm excited to talk to you about all my thoughts on that one as I go along. Definitely won't finish it tonight. Um, I'm hoping I would love to read 100 pages of it tonight. Just really go for a few hours and just get through 100 pages. But I'm not going to like assume I can do that. I at least want to get through 50 pages to maintain a good enough reading speed so I can finish it by the end of the month but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, so that's the plan. And in the next clip, I will probably be at a bookstore. Probably the first one I'll go to is one of the independent bookstores. I'm kind of going down the line like geographically. So we'll start with the first independent bookstore, which um, is having the sale and we'll just see what we can find there. And then we'll go down to Barnes and Noble is the next one geographically. And then we'll go to the other independent bookstore, which I think will work well because if I end up being too exhausted to go to that third independent bookstore, I may just do it on a different day, probably sometime in May, so that I'll be able to just really enjoy today and not do anything to overexert myself because this next week I'm starting more officially into finals. I do have two finals that are actually due, one's due tomorrow, and then there's another one that's due on Monday that I'm pretty much done with. I just have to kind of edit and stuff. So it's not like a huge thing that I need to stress about right now. Um, but besides those two, the rest of my finals will start to be due the following week. So anyway, we'll have all that stress. So right now we're going to kind of have a calm before the storm, so to speak. Hi guys. So we just made it to the first bookstore, Hideaway Used Books, and we'll see what we can find.
Okay, so I did end up finding a few things in there. Sorry, there wasn't a lot of footage because it's kind of a small store and there were a lot of people in there today because of the sale, so, and it's a Saturday, so. Anyway, but I did pick up three books. I will show you all the books I end up picking up today in a little clip towards the end of my book shopping portion. Of course, after that, I'll be reading. But anyway, we'll show you those then, but now we're going to head off to Barnes & Noble. <music> Okay, not gonna film for too long because there's definitely people around, but you guys, I got so many books today. Luckily, that last round I ended up paying in cash that I got for, I wanna say, oh, I think it was for watching my siblings a couple weeks ago while my parents were out of town. So I didn't necessarily use what's in my bank account, which is good because I use my bank account to pay for bills and things. So I at least did that, but man oh man i have so many books so we will show you once i get home okay so back at the apartment and like i said i ended up getting quite a few books um luckily i did um keep below my budget which was about 50 dollars, which is how much i'll earn this weekend as every week i well approximately every week sometimes i just don't get around to it and it's okay but every week i do write a blog post for my aunt who runs an online school and she pays me 50 dollars per post so i will be writing that today Day, sending it in and then we'll get paid this next week for that plus I just got paid for my other jobs I do of course need money for bills and stuff but anyway I was able to figure out a way to spend this money without overdrawing on my bank account on my checking account which was good between the gift card and paying a little bit in cash I feel okay about it, but let's just run through what I got. So I ended up picking up three things from the first bookshop. So we ended up getting Praise of Folly by Erasmus. This is a, I don't know if it's a set of like essays or just, I think it's just kind of essays and thoughts on different things, but I really know very little about it. I know a little bit about Erasmus. And I know that this was written kind of for Sir Thomas More, who is an interesting historical figure to me. So yeah, kind of a nonfiction um, medieval work, or I guess it's kind of a little more towards the Renaissance era. But anyway, that's the first one I picked up. Then I ended up picking up Victoria by Daisy Goodman, Goodwin. Excuse me. This is exactly what it sounds like. It is a fictional retelling of the life of Queen Victoria, I think just in her younger years. And I've heard good things about it. I've seen it around a lot, so I'm excited to pick it up at some point to add it to my historical fiction collection. And then very spur of the moment, I ended up picking up His Dark Materi Materials by Philip Pullman, the full collection of all three of the books, which I have kind of had an interest in this series, but not much. I don't know why I just really haven't been that drawn to it. But I saw this nice edition of all three of them. It's a floppy paperback, which we always love. And I figured, you know what? May as well pick it up. I could always use a little bit more middle grade fantasy in my life. And I think this is one that I'll really enjoy the more I think about it. So ended up picking this up and it will also be good because I can share it with my brother, my younger brother who also enjoys to read and he's in the middle grade age right now. So he may enjoy picking this up as well. Okay, so then moving into the other used bookstore that I just went to, I ended up picking up five books, I almost said six, five books 
from there because they had a lot of options for classical, as in Greek and Roman literature, as well as a few medieval things that I decided to pick up. So the first one I got from there was the Agricola and the Germania. I'm sure I did not pronounce either of those Germania. Uh, by Tacitus. This is a Roman history, first about the British Isles. This is kind of the first written down account of the British Isles. And then the Germania or the Germania um, is about the German tribes. So from Rome. So very interested to read this at some point. Not sure when, possibly in June, but this is one, yeah, that grabbed my attention. Up next, we have a book I actually have read and really enjoyed, so I wanted to get my own copy of it, and that's Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, and this is a translation by Marie Boroff, and I am really excited to just have a copy of this. I love the story. It's a King Arthur legend, and it's one I really enjoyed and would love to dig a little deeper into. So I think it will be fun to read this, be able to take notes in it. When I first read it, I read it in a rented textbook. So I wasn't able to really take notes inside of it or obviously keep it. So now I can have this and I can revisit it whenever I would like. Up next, we have another piece of classical literature, The Voyage of Argo by Apoll Apollonius of Rhodes. Wow, my pronunciation in this is going to be just amazing. But anyway, I have never read this before, but I love Medea. She's one of my favorite mythological characters. And so I kind of wanted to read this just to be able to get a little bit more of her background as well as just the exciting adventure of this story. This is about the voyage of the Argo and Jason and the Argonauts. And yeah, I'm really excited to pick it up, I think. I don't know if this was originally in verse. I would assume so because most of them are. But this is in prose, it looks like. So I don't know what that means for the story. But um, oh well, that's just what I got for now. If I really enjoy the story, I may. If it is originally in verse, which again, I would assume so, um, I'll pick up a verse translation of it later, but this will at least be a good starting point, hopefully. Then I finally, finally got my own copy of Ovid's Metamorphoses, and I'm so excited. This is the A.D. Melville translation, which when I looked it up, I saw some good things about it, so I assumed it's a decent enough translation. I've read pieces of this. I haven't read the whole thing, but I've read chunks of it and have really enjoyed it, so I'm excited to at some point maybe read through the whole thing would be great. I don't know when that will be <laughs> because yeah, I just don't know. But this is one that I'm excited to give a try at some point. And last for that bookstore, we have another book that I'm excited to finally have my own copy of that I've just read pieces of and that is The Aeneid, Aeneid by Virgil. And this is the translation by C. Day Lewis, which is I believe from the 80s. So an older translation, but I had seen some positive things about this one as well. Oh, I think it's even older than 80s. I think it might be the 50s. Yep, <laughs> it's a 50s translation, but I mean, I'm excited to have it. And I wouldn't mind having multiple translations of this because this is one of my favorite of the classical works of literature that I've read. Again, I've only read parts of this one. I actually have only really read the Dido portions of this story, so very little of it, but I'd love to read it all the way through once again. So I don't know if I'll do it in June necessarily for the readathon. I may read portions of it for the readathon, portions of Metamorphoses. I don't really know, but I at least have a copy so I can read it at some point. I'm a little worried now that I know that this is a 50s translation that the reading might be a little tricky, but I'm going to give it a try. I mean, how bad can it be, you know? Ooh, but it definitely smells old. Okay, and then last but certainly not least, we have my run to Barnes & Noble. So first of all, I got a book that has a bit of a story behind it. I ended up getting Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. I've wanted to read this for a very long time, but I haven't gotten it because it's hard to find a cheap edition that's not mass market paperback. As you can see, I ended up with mass market paperback. So here's what happened. <laughs> 
Oh gosh, I've literally gone a couple years now without buying this book because I wanted to get the nice full copy. I was like, no, I just want to get the full paperback. I don't want the mass market paperback. So when I got that $20 gift card, I was like, perfect. That's the perfect amount for me to get the full paperback edition of this. So I pick it out and then I was like, you know what? I'll look around and maybe there will be like a book on sale or just another book that will catch me at my eye or something and I can spend a little bit of money on it. Well, the book that caught my eye was the other book I ended up getting, Ariad Ariadne. Again, those Greek words those greek names just not i just can't get but anyway this is the story of ariadne who is the princess of crete and she ends up marrying theseus after he kills the minotaur and she has a sister that she has a strong relationship with. So it's kind of like Circe by Madeline Miller where it's just focusing on this female character in Greek mythology and it just drew my attention so much. I had never heard of this, which surprises me because I feel like this is one more people would be interested in, um, especially with its relation to Circe, its similarity to Circe. But it's a debut novel apparently, recently released, and I just, I couldn't help myself. I decided to just pick it up um, but it's like $27 and I was like I don't want to spend $27 especially when I knew I was going to go to another bookstore afterwards that I'd probably want to spend a good chunk of money in so I was very unsure so I ended up just giving in and going for the cheaper copy of Elantris. Luckily, this mass market paperback is actually not terribly printed. And to be honest, I've read several Brandon Sanderson novels in the mass market paperback editions and it's fine. Like, I don't know why I've been so weird about it. I know a lot of people hate mass market paperbacks, but to be honest, like, I don't hate them. I mean, they're fine. Like, I can read from them. I feel like the only reason I've been anti them recently is because of BookTube and because so many people hate them on there that I'm like, oh yeah, I hate them too. Too, but actually like I've never had a problem with them up until now so I'm like I don't know why I'm letting other people's opinions like sway mine so anyway I was just like you know what we're just we're gonna get this and it will be okay because I have Warbreaker in the mass market paperback edition so these two can kind of sit side by side as the standalone fantasy works in Brandon Sanderson's caught Brandon Sanderson wow I don't know what I just said Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere um, and they can just be kind of partners and that will be great. So anyway, finally just decided to get mass market paperback after all these years of not getting it because I wanted the full one and then I get a chance to get the full one. And then I still went for the mass market paperback because I got sucked into this. So anyway, that's fine. Have a Elantris. In case you don't know what this is about, I guess I should explain a little bit what it is about. This is about a city that's kind of like a city of gods, but suddenly like a, hun a few hundred years before this starts, I think like this disease starts spreading throughout the city. And so they're shut down and everybody outside the city who ends up developing that disease gets thrown in there. And that's all I know but I've heard good things about it and I want to read it mostly to have a greater sense of the Cosmere. So as Stormlight Archive continues to continue on, I'll be able to have a lot more context for everything happening. So anyway, there's that. Excited to finally have a copy of this, even though it's the mass market paperback I've been avoiding forever. Um, and I'm also excited to have this because it seems so good and I'm just hoping I enjoy it. When I looked on Goodreads, it has pretty high ratings. It's over four stars. So I assume that means that it's a pretty good one, which, you know, I'm looking forward to it, so. And then the last thing I got was actually not a book. It's actually this little Patronus crystal lead light keychain from Harry Potter. There were just so many great Harry Potter things in their Harry Potter section in um, Barnes and Noble and I just had to get something. I actually was debating between Ariadne and a board game for Harry Potter, but I decided to go with that because I just couldn't help myself. But then I was like, but I gotta get something Harry Potter because I honestly might have to watch Harry Potter tonight because that just trip put me in a Harry Potter mood for sure. So, and it's been a long time since 
I barely washed it. So we're gonna see which um, Patronus I ended up getting. Oh, it's smaller than I thought it would be. Oh, and of course we have the dough, which I'm oh totally fine with having that. It's supposed to light up, I wonder. Oh, got it to light up. You can't see it super well on the camera, but sort of, you can tell it's blue. Um. Anyway, but that's really fun. I'm gonna put that on my little Harry Potter shrine that I have. That's a lot of fun. I'm excited about that. I don't know if you can see there. Maybe you can see the Patronus a little bit better, but anyway that's that and yeah i'm really excited about this i mean i ended up with um 11 books which is just great granted i guess you could kind of say it's more like 13 because i have that bind up of his dark materials but anyway exciting a lot of books and i'm not going to buy any more books for a few months, I'm thinking. I need to make a rule that I have to read 10 of my books before I can buy another one because I am running low on space on my shelves. Granted, I have a lot less shelf space than most other people in booktube do. So while I'm overflowing on my shelves, it's not like I have a full wall or a full room of bookshelves. I have one big sh bookshelf, one small one, and then one like little cupboard that I shove a few in. So I mean, really, it's not like I have that many compared to other people, but I do have, I'm just getting more and more, like I've just gone crazy the past little while with books, just buying all this stuff. So yeah, I'm thinking we're going to have to make a new rule for me. But anyway, I think I'm going to eat lunch and then I'm debating if I'm going to read or if I'm going to watch something. I wanna read, I wanna get a lot of reading done today, but I tend, I don't know, I don't know, I need to think. I also need to do, read through my essay, my final paper, and then write a blog post. So maybe I'll watch Harry Potter and just do those things while I'm watching. And that way I can have that done and then I can get into reading. Yeah, so that will probably be the plan. Just finished year five, so we're on to year six, because why not? Also read the Brontes for the day. I'm probably gonna read some of this while I watch, since I've watched this a million times, and it's not like I need to watch every single second of it. <laughs> dinner has arrived, and I am starving. Okay, I just finished my dinner. It was fabulous. And I'm going to continue watching Harry Potter while I read The Half-Sisters. I've made it a few pages in at least while I've been paying attention to Harry Potter a little bit more than I was planning to, but that's okay. Um, but I just wanted to get on here because she stopped doing it, but outside there was this little girl doing the Frozen 2 little awing song and it was so cute. I was dying. She was just going at it. Now they're just screaming, but it was freaking adorable, especially because it's very echoey in my apartment complex like courtyard area so I think that's what she was going for but just thought I would come on here and tell you that because it was super adorable. Hi guys so I apologize for this dreadful lighting but it is bedtime so I'm going to wrap up this vlog here. I was able to get to the halfway point in the half sisters and really really liking it still. The characters in this are fascinating and it's very interesting to see the differences between Bianca, who is the illegitimate daughter who is an actress, and the legitimate daughter, Alice, and their lifestyles, and even just their ability to find happiness is so very different due to their different circumstances. And it's just a really fascinating look at women's lot, essentially, during the Victorian period. I really, really am enjoying it and have been very impressed by how open it is about certain topics that I feel like other Victorian novels don't discuss very much. For example, the theater world is very heavily described in this, all the good and the bad, and I feel like most other Victorian novels would not approach that sort of topic, especially not so blatantly. And so I really, especially since it was written by a woman, um, I feel like most don't really address possible issues with abusive men and just a lot of things that this book deals with that I really have appreciated reading. In fact, I actually thought this was, I might have mentioned this earlier, but I actually thought this was written closer to the end of the Victorian period. 
but it actually was written towards the beginning. It was written in 1854, so kind of interesting for me to find that out because, like I said, it just is very open about things that most Victorian novels aren't, and the sisters, again, are so fascinating. This is such an easy book to read, and I actually wish that it was not out of print simply for the sake of it's such an easy book to read and get into that I feel like it's a really good starter Victorian novel for people. Um, but because it's out of print, it's kind of harder to get. So I feel weird saying like this is a good beginner's work. Um, but it is if you're able to get your hands on it. So anyway, definitely a great read so far. I'm excited to finish it. Hopefully before the end of the month is my goal. And yeah, so there's that. I also was able to watch three Harry Potter movies. I mean, sort of watched. I was reading while I was watching, so I kind of was going back and forth a little bit. So it didn't feel like three movies to me because I wasn't really watching all three of them, but technically made it through three Harry Potter movies, which was fun because I don't even remember the last time I've had like a movie marathon. It was probably, I don't know how long ago, years ago <laughs> that I've done that. So it was kind of fun and yeah. That's it. We're gonna finish this clip out with this horrible, dreadful lighting that I really apologize for. You can barely even see my face. But anyway, yeah, we're gonna wrap this up. Thanks so much for having spending the day with me. I hope you guys are all having a good month, a good week, and hope that you'll all be able to go book shopping soon. I know some areas still aren't able to quite yet. Um, so hopefully soon as vaccinations start rounding out a little bit more. So that is everything from me and I will see you next week. Bye!